the it's in focus. Over the last four years, I've been making adventure films out of my Sprinter van. Now, together with my wife Janelle, we are finally giving our van the build out it deserves. Hey, friend, welcome to episode three of Van Build 2.0. Episode is all about rest. My, the thing I hate the most <laughs> in regards to van life. Before we dive into it, I just wanted to let you know that this uh, episode is brought to you by the Adventure Film Academy. And last year I did a workshop on a sailing trip, which was a lot of fun. And the biggest response I got back from that is people being like, when are you doing that again? Because we didn't get to go and we would like to. So this year we're doing it two sailing trips in the second half of May. The dates aren't fully finalized and announced, but they're gonna be five day trips. So go to adventurefilmacademy.com to find out when more information is available. So Rust, babe, wanna tell them about the Rust? The Rust. We kind of always knew our van had a Rust issue, like it was pretty obvious, you could see it. We initially thought to just solve ourselves, all of a sudden became a bit of a dilemma. We're like, what are we gonna do about this? So there's kind of two types of rust that I just want to touch on here at the beginning. Not an expert on this stuff, but basically there's surface rust and then there's rust that actually erodes the material and like rots it out from the inside. So surface rust, thankfully you can just grind that away for the most part, repaint it. And for the most part, that's good to go. Mm. The other type of rust gets into the actual metal itself and rots it from the inside out. And that's what we started finding. A little bit more of that. You could like poke it with a screwdriver and just start like flaking apart. And we're like, oh dear. Because <laughs> you, if you grind that away, then, then there's nothing left. And so you have to cut that out and replace it mm -hmm. with new metal. From this point, we we're like, this won't be the van. We need to find, find a new option. And we kind of thought through three yeah. solutions. Three solutions. Basically sell our van and look for either a brand new van right off the lot. Um, a van that just a couple years old, so a little bit cheaper, or just a similar van to what we currently had, just in better condition. So that first option was my favorite, uh, just going to the lot and buying a new 4x4 Sprinter van. That would be the dream van right dream. there. But it basically just any new van from the lot. We just knew right off the bat that we didn't have the money for that. We're in our mid twenties. We haven't uh, amassed enough capital to pull something like that off yet. Yeah, and we didn't want to go into debt for this. <laughs> so then that brings us to the second option, which was buying a used van about a handful of years old, in great condition, um, solid base, solid thing to work with. Yeah, not tons of kilometers on it, but on the used market, so significantly cheaper mm -hmm. than a new one. And vans like this would be basically in the 2012 to 2016 range. And this could be the domestic options of high roof vans like the Promaster or the Transit. And there's a lot of sweet options in this category, but so a new van, so we're gonna talk in Canadian prices here, like a new van from the small research that I was doing was between 45 and $70,000, 70,000 70, being like the four x four versions in Canada. And then a used option, handful of years old, depending on what kind of condition it is like an amazing deal on a van like this felt like it'd be $25,000 or something like that. But oftentimes they would go all the way up to 35, 40, even $45,000. So if we're giving ourselves advice, we'd say go buy one of those. Yeah, that seems like the obvious answer. Just go buy one of those vans. <laughs> and that would be our ideal choice. But again, some of those are getting up pretty, pretty expensive. We had started looking at, okay, if a basic insulated conversion was like what one to three grand or something yeah well, you could do a rough build out with some insulation and wood on the walls for like a couple grand which we're fine with because that's what we've done the last two years like we had a couple hundred dollars worth of a conversion <laughs> into our van <laughs> yeah we're totally okay with roughing it but this was this is like our ideal we wanted to build something that had that we could work out of for months on end yeah, we started more piece, ease. piecing together what would all be included in that and we were realizing, oh, this is gonna be like a hefty investment. Probably, what did we figure out? Like 15 to 20 grand? 
Yeah, which on is the a lot of money. <laughs> on the lower end of a nice build out, if we bought all the stuff, it, it could be around 15 grand Canadian. And then if we bought some of the nicer variants of stuff, we could get all the way up to $25,000. Yeah, and we were remembering when you bought the van four years ago, <laughs> you basically... I spent all my money on the van. And then there was no money left for the conversion. Some of you at this point maybe would have thought, hey, you can find some deals on the earliest models of the newer version of Sprinter van. And I'll just say kind of just as a caveat, like that model of van, the 07, the 08s, even those early years of the new van, to me, I don't trust at all. And those early years end up being the ones that are on a good deal where it might enter this 10 to $20,000 range. But then because those were the first models of a new type of van, there ended up being some interesting mechanical issues. And let's just be clear, if you're buying a used vehicle, there's going to be mechanical issues. That's just what happens. The problem with getting one of these newer model of Sprinter vans is that they're so high tech and the computers in them and the diesel emission stuff that most of the issues that you'll have, you have to take to a Mercedes dealer to get worked on. So it'd be naive to think with a used vehicle, things aren't gonna break. And I, I didn't wanna fall into that van envy trap where we wanted the newer model, but in the one that we could afford and then end up having even more crazy mm -hmm. issues that we're spending lots and lots of money on down the road. So we kind of just decided we were going to look for that older version and you spent probably over a year looking on Craigslist every day, just like hunting and hunting for one of these vans. Uh, some of them would pop up across the country and then it, I'd start looking at like, hey, can we fly to go look at that one and then it would sell. Yeah, it just goes so quick. This van life movement is great, but it may, means there's a shortage of a high quality, good deals. The fear is, is that if you see one that's a good deal, that looks too good to be true. Maybe it, it is too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of reminded in this process, I can't remember where I first heard it, but that phrase of the cheapest vehicle is the one you own. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason for that is if you're buying a great deal of a used vehicle, there's that fear for at least a multi-year period of, was there a big issue that the previous owner knew about that's going to explode on us that they just, so they got it, they got rid of it on a good deal to us, but then this big issue is hiding. So it feels like in some ways our hand was forced a little bit into keeping our van Florence. So it's not necessarily the sentimental value. I was, I was okay to move on from this van, but we just could not find one that felt like it was a great fit for us or was even affordable at all. So that way we could still have money left to do our build. So once we decided that we were gonna keep our van, we started looking for a local auto body shop because we needed some help with the rust. The amount of shop time to replace sections of metal starts to get up there. So even a repair of that magnitude starts to cost a lot of money, even if you go with the most budget person. So that's where we started looking to do a service trade where Levi could make the auto body shop good videos. They could in return do some rust work for us. And we found one. So we missed our summer window, but by September, we had found the shop and we were getting ready to drop off the van. Um, but in order to do that, we had to pull even more stuff out. We wanted to do a proper color change. That means we had to remove the roof vent. There's this repair that I had done when I first got the van to prevent it from leaking. A very sketchy repair, but it held for the, for the most part. How many things in this build do you think I'm gonna be really excited for and you're gonna be slightly nervous for? <laughs> well, this is the first. <laughs> Can you hold the camera for this? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> it just like gave. It, like, Imagine it went to the next window. <laughs> I expected the window to like feel like I hit something, but it literally just felt like it just like went through the air. That's amazing. Because that, I, mean, I should have used a smaller hammer, I guess. Oh, 
the shop got right to work and we were expecting to have to leave the van there for about a month but within days they had it totally torn apart and they were like just going for it i got to come in and film some of the progress there which was fun and there was really rusted out areas around the window edge we pulled the main windshield out and did rust treatment around all that and the bottom edges of basically all the doors were completely rotted out so they were replacing that with new metal mm -hmm. the time i got the van stuck back in the day and made this big dent in the bottom <laughs> corner they're basically doing body work that was way outside of my experience or i just would have no idea of how to do myself yeah it was so relieving just to like have someone taking care of the van and doing it properly And so we're diving into this project, setting aside some money, even expecting really that there'll be mechanical repairs we'll have to do on this project. Mm -hmm. So a year down the road, a year and a half down the road, when something breaks, we were expecting that. Mm -hmm. We're just hoping the amount of things that breaks stays under five to $10,000. <laughs> and uh, if, if things don't break, then hey, that's just more travel money. But a cool part of the collaboration with the shop was we could tackle some of the stuff on the inside mm -hmm. to keep the overall project cost down and and even those projects ended up being more intimidating than we'd expected we'll do a future video kind of walking through that stuff that's a look into our van rust story maybe you're ready for us to just get into the build and boy are we too <laughs> yeah. uh, we did so not ready. we did not expect to be doing so many steps to just get to stage one but i think at the end of this we'll end up feeling a special kind of ownership over this build mm -hmm and uh, hopefully she treats us well for, for years to come. Make sure you follow along because we're so excited to reveal the finished paint job to you guys soon. It looks so good. It's so good. <laughs> you can check out our whole van build series in a playlist below in the description. Thanks for, thanks for welcoming Janelle back to the YouTube channel and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. So remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.